wonderful morning it is to be in the house of the Lord. And we want to thank you for being here, and also you who are tuning in live streaming. And we are blessed today to be here in God's house, worshiping the one true God. We have some announcements to go through quickly. And next week, we are having communion. So we will have the drive through communion in the back parking lot next week. And June 7th at 11 a.m. in the back parking lot, you can just drive up like you did last month and receive the Holy Communion. Also, next week, we are having our senior breakfast slash recognition. We have six uh, seniors who have graduated, and we're going to recognize them next week. And uh, we hope that you can be here and tune in for that as well. Make sure you hit the like and share button if you're watching us live stream. And also uh, comment, let us know that you are here this morning. We appreciate your giving to the church. And if you so feel led to give, you can mail it in or you can stop by the church and put it through the mail slot or see Rob. Uh, throughout the business week. So again, we are uh, blessed to be able to be here this morning to worship our one true God. Thank you.
Praise God indeed on this Pentecost Sunday that we are here to worship our Lord. We have some, uh, it's time for the morning prayer, and some people we want to lift up in prayer this morning. We want to lift up the Hall family as Melinda passed away this week. We want to uh, keep them in our prayers. Also, we have some people who are having birthdays and anniversaries this upcoming week. Uh, Mike Hockey has a birthday this week. Bill Chafee has a birthday this week. And Mary Alice Bobbitt, Betty Stenoff, and Betty Head all have birthdays this week. And then we have one anniversary that's going to happen this week. That is our senior pastor, uh, Don and Joy. They have their anniversary this week. And uh, it's been many years, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, Joy. Right? And uh, 32. 32. So, <laughs> 32 years. And praise God as the example of marriage and what it should be. So let us go to our Heavenly Father this morning in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful morning you have given us to be here in the house of the Lord. Lord, we lift up to you, Lord, the world around us, not only for the pandemic, Lord, but for the tensions that go on uh, in society, especially in America today. Lord, we should speak out against injustice, but yet, Lord, we should do so responsibly and act responsibly. Lord, I pray that you will send your ministry agents to cool the tensions that are going on around in the world. Lord, whether it's with the pandemic for people who have loss of life or who's going through the, uh, the experience of it, Lord, we lift up the, the Caitlin Spangler and, and their children and her children, Lord, because they've been exposed to someone who has COVID-19. And Lord, they're in quarantine. And we just pray that you will... Give them, Lord, the peace of mind of letting them know that you're in control during these 14 days. Heavenly Father, we, we lift up to you the Hall family, Lord, for they are going through the grieving process. And Lord, we just pray that you will be with them and let them know, Lord, that you are with them. Lord, we lift up to you those who are having birthdays uh, this week, also those who are experiencing anniversaries this week. Lord, we, we lift up to you our pastor and his wife. Lord, we have been blessed by their service. And Lord, we just pray that you, that you will continue to use them in a mighty way that we can minister to our community at large. Heavenly Father, we are blessed. On Pentecost Sunday, Lord, with the birth of the church, we're blessed that we can live in a country that we can assemble together and worship you. Lord, worship you. Lord, prepare our hearts this morning for worship. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for our, our president, our governor and mayor, and also those men and women who make decisions for us. We pray, Lord, for our military, those who have served, those who are serving, because we have been blessed by their service. And Heavenly Father, we lift up to you the ministries of this church, our children's ministry, our youth ministry, our adult ministries. Lord, I pray that during this time where most people cannot come to church, Lord, that we are drawn closer to you in word and in deed. Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all this morning for your son, Jesus Christ, who went to the cross and bore our pain and our shame. Lord, who gave birth to the church salvation for all. It doesn't matter what your uh, gender is or your skin color or when you were born, Lord, salvation is for all. And if there are those, Lord, here this morning who have not made Christ their Lord and Savior, I pray that you will prepare their hearts for the message they are to receive this morning. Lord, if there are those who are listening, live stream, Lord, and they've never received Christ as their Lord and Savior, I pray that you will prepare their hearts, Lord, for the message that they are about to receive. And Lord, may this message be blessed by you. 
Lord, for the betterment and the furthering of your kingdom. We thank you for the truth of your word and everything that it teaches us. Lord, in your word, it teaches us how to pray. When a disciple came to Jesus and said, Lord, how should we pray? Jesus said to that disciple and to the others that are there, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture comes this morning from the book of Acts, chapter 2. I'll begin with verses 1 through 12. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire separating and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, by region and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? May God add a blessing for reading and hearing of God's holy word. We've had concerns about my being able to be heard on the live stream. And we intentionally raised my volume on the speakers, but the more I've thought about it this morning, I think it's picking me up directly. And we should go the other way with the sound and make me raise my volume a little <laughs> bit. I do pretty well for a little while and then I back <laughs> off. And so I'll try to keep it at a good volume all the way through. Um, the opening of the scripture this morning when the day of Pentecost had come they were gathered together in one place I long for the day when the church will be gathered together Amen. in its fullness where we won't have tape on pews and we won't be wearing masks. We'll be sitting shoulder to shoulder again and worshiping the Lord together. But that day is not yet here. And the reality is that the church has not been gathered together in one place since that day. We are not the church. We're not the sum total of the church of Christ. Not even in Okeechobee can we claim that right. The Baptists and the Pentecostals, the Presbyterians, the Episcopalians, the Catholics, Christians worshiping in countless places around our community, as well as individuals who are in their homes watching this live or on delay thanks be to God that the spirit is where we are this day it's not confined to a place it hasn't been since that first day the church was together in one place praying for the promise of the Holy Spirit And upon them, the Spirit came that day, and the people began to speak in tongues. Not the tongues that is often 
evidenced in churches today of a, of a mixture of sounds put together. But language from all over the world, they were speaking. Galileans who didn't speak Latin, who didn't know the dialects of all the various places from which the people had gathered in Jerusalem. God used an event that was pre-planned. Pentecost is a Jewish holiday, not by that name. The Feast of Weeks. People were gathered together. It was the second wave. Those generally who couldn't make it to Passover would come the six weeks later, seven weeks later, and gather for the Feast of Weeks. And so, and, and some people doubled up. But a lot of people were from out of town. We know how it works when there are festivals. Broward County yesterday had people from all over the state and all over the nation who came to see the launch. People were packed in. To Jerusalem and there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind they didn't have the the term freight train available to them but everywhere I've ever heard about a tornado people have said it sounds like a freight train And to me, that is the sound, that rumble, that roar of the wind is the sound that drew people out. Curiosity seekers, people who were bored on a Sunday morning, they came out to hear what the excitement was all about. And then they began to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ spoken by people, Galileans, speaking their language. <coughs> the increased volume takes <coughs> extra vocal cords I'm going to have to work on this week. They heard the gospel. They heard the good news. And they came out curious about what it was all about. Peter begins to preach in the section just beyond where I read this morning. Begins to lay out for the people the hope that is in Christ Jesus. The gospel has not changed in 2,000 years. Our hope is in Christ. In the midst of this pandemic, our hope is in Christ. God used an event long ago to bring people together and then to disperse them around the world. The church went from being able to be fed in one place to growing by 5,000 and 3,000 in the succeeding days. They never fit again in one place. God distributed those people back 
to Phrygia and Pamphylia and Rome, to Cyrene, to Crete, and all the other places that are named in the gospel or in the book of Acts. People distributed around the world with a burning love of God in their hearts. And I wonder if God may not be using this pandemic to distribute the church back out into the world in a way that has not been done in 2,000 years. We have people watching this broadcast this morning from at least as far away as California. Joy's sister was the first one tuned in this morning. My sister-in-law, Vicki. 7 a.m. in California, she tuned in to our broadcast this morning. There are people watching all over in their homes in Indiana, in Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, some of our regular people, strangers whom we have never met, who have never darkened the doors of Okeechobee First United Methodist Church are tuning in to the broadcast today. Our reach is greater than it has ever been. We've had hundreds of people tune in each week. It's been almost unbelievable at times. I think on Easter we got up to 900 and some odd people had watched the broadcast. We have never had 900 people <laughs> in church at any one time. We couldn't do that in three services. And yet, the reach is there. lives are being touched the gospel is being preached the gospel is being heard in their own language in their own homes on phones on iPads on computer screens on televisions uh, for the people that have got them linked together and yet some of us are still here, gathered in this place. And we'll go out to our homes, to eventually our places of work, masked more often than not, cautiously going about life and yet doing so, I trust, filled with the presence of Christ, with the love of Christ, everywhere we go. We enter into a world that is hurting. Many upset over the death Of Mr. Floyd. Many feeling helpless that there's not something we can do to undo what has been done. We live in a world where people will film what's going on but not intervene, not step up and do something to help when another is hurting. Whether they're white or black or anything in between, we need to intervene if we see something going on. Not just Film it so that someone can be held accountable after the fact, but mobilize to do something. 
if we see something wrong going on. It would have been a terrific risk for someone filming that incident to have tried to tackle that police officer or knock him off that man. But how the, the drama might have played out differently if someone had just done something. Most of us will never see anything as horrific as what happened. We'll never have a chance to to intervene in that kind of way. But we've got to be conscious that we sometimes treat people differently because of the color of their skin. We react differently somehow we've got to get in touch with the Spirit of God within us to not allow us to respond differently. There are brothers and sisters in Christ at the AME Church today in our own community who are hurting, hurting because of this death and so many others. I don't know how best in this time of pandemic we reach out to our brothers and sisters in Christ. But I pray that God will use us in our diaspora, in our scatteredness, and in our unity to make a difference, to a world that is hurting To a world of questions. What does this mean? That's what they asked on the day of Pentecost. What does this mean? What does it mean for the love of God to come down in Jesus Christ in our hearts? What do we do with that love toward our fellow man in this time of pandemic? And in what will ultimately be the aftermath of this whole thing? I don't know what it will look like. But I pray that God will use us to make a difference. What does it mean that the God of all creation loved you and I so much that he sent his son? And that when he was taken up into heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit to reign in our lives, to fill us with the love of God. We need his love. We need it to fill the hearts of people everywhere. Those watching, those who will have contact with, those who are watching who will have contact with. God's love 
is needed in our world more than ever before. It begins with us, but it doesn't end there. It doesn't stop there. It's got to snowball from us into everywhere we go and everything we do, expressing the love of God everywhere we go. If it doesn't mean that, it doesn't mean anything. It may mean starting conversations with people that that we haven't had honest conversations with before. It may be expressing love in practical ways to people who need to know that it's more than lip service that drives us. The love of God came in a practical way on the day of Pentecost. People weren't just talking in tongues to their own enjoyment. They were speaking the good news to people everywhere. Everyone present spoke Greek. Virtually everyone present spoke Aramaic. Virtually everyone present spoke Hebrew. Any one language might have worked that day. But God spoke to people in their own language. They heard him speaking through ordinary people. We put them down as the great saints of the church. We think of them as as larger than life. But the 120 people were just regular people like us. Who allowed the Spirit to speak through them. May God's Spirit speak through us to share the hope that is in Christ. Not just for life everlasting, not for pie in the sky, but for a difference made now in our hearts, in our lives. May it bear fruit, even as the day of Pentecost did. May we bear his fruit today and tomorrow and in all the days to come. Amen. We're going to sing together Sweet, Sweet Spirit. And does it have a number? Page 334. Oh.
Now may the love of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless.